Hi, it's Greg here again with another video to help you transform your business or possibly your life with Odoo. And in this video, we're going to look at how to customize Odoo reports. But before we get started, please take a moment to like and subscribe to my channel. That's how YouTube knows that you're interested in these videos and make sure that uh, they get out in front of you. So we're gonna get started right away. Uh, I'm gonna create a, a simple little app so we can build a custom report. So this will be useful for people that are kind of new to Odoo development and just kind of want to see how to, you can build a simple app. So if 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 you're in that category, you want to watch uh, through. If you really just want to see how to do the report part of it, I'm gonna put a little timestamp down below, and you can jump to right where I do the report. But uh, if, if you want to follow along, we're going to go right here from the very beginning. I'm going to create a database for us. I'm going to call it Vet Database. We're going to make a simple little vet app. Now, in my Mastering Odoo development, I have a vet app that is very feature-filled, and it ties in a lot uh, with teaching you how to build uh, applications. So, Odoo, I'm just going to make a really simple model in this case so we have something to work with. So I just have a database installed and we don't even have to install any applications because we are going to build a simple little app ourselves. And so I got my development environment up here and the first thing I'm gonna do is pull up my launch JSON. If I'm building an app, one of the first things I wanna do is make it so it's really easy for me to update it. And so I'm gonna come in here and I know I'm gonna name my app vet app and I know, and so I'm going to go ahead and put the the U in there to update that. And I know I've named my database Vet Database. So this is the switches that I want to use while I'm restarting my server, so I don't have to go in and manually update uh, my my app each time. It saves a lot of time in development. Now to make my app, a simple scaffold command here. Uh, I just like to go into my Odoo directory, do an Odoo dash bin scaffold, simple Vet app, and then. Um, we just put where we want to put it in my add-ons directory. It happens to be a back directory there in my add-ons. I hit enter like that. I come right up in here and I got myself a fresh new Odoo application. I'm going to jump into my models real quick and we're just going to create a, a one model for, to hold our animals for our vet application. So I'm going to come up here under edit. Uh, toggle the line comment off. And so basically Odoo's giving us this model template. If you're new to building Odoo apps. This is obviously going very fast for you. I have many other videos you can uh, see in my channel here that are about building Odoo applications. Uh, but I probably wanted to take that one off too and I just didn't. And um, let's add a couple more fields in here. We're gonna have a breed for our animals and I'm just gonna make it a character field. Now in my uh, course I show how to make a mini to one here so you can have other models tying all this together but we're gonna keep this really simple uh, let's have a birthday um, fields date and it really doesn't matter what we have here this is just for us to see how to make these reports so I just make a few fields and I don't really want to have this called vet app vet app I'm gonna call this animal so I usually change this over and we'll call our class animal. So we have a class for our animals uh, inside of our vet application. And that's what we've defined here. So I can go up here and usually this time I would probably stop this and save it because I've changed my launch JSON. Anytime I change this, I don't wanna just hit restart because it will ignore these changes. It just kinda of takes what it had before. So um, I stopped it and I'm gonna restart it again. And I'm looking down here for any errors. Now what I do know I will get, I should get is a warning once I install this app. I guess it's, um, it's not installed yet. So let me pull up our thing here and we will refresh. Let's go ahead and see if it just shows up if I type that app. And there it is. So I didn't change anything in the manifest uh, yet. I just went ahead and created a model and installed it. So uh, the app is actually installed now, and if we look, we are going to see this warning show up now, this yellow warning that says we don't have access to the vet app animal model. There's no access rules. And this is the easiest way when you're getting started to just copy what they give you. Here's the example. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to jump over 
and in here, inside of our security folder inside of my add-ons come in here and paste over the top of the one that was given there by default and change these switches to all ones and so there's plenty of videos I have on more about the security aspects of Odoo but basically this is you know create read write update delete uh, kind of things like crud uh, flags for what you're allowed to do and so I'm gonna save that as well and now when I restart um, that's going to fix that warning and basically give us an access to the models. Now we can't see the model yet. And so there is one more little thing we're going to have to do before we can get onto the report. And that's we need to make it so it can show up in the menu. So I, I go to here to views <clears throat> and our template gives us a, a simple menu structure. All we have to do is comment out uh, and reveal it, so to speak. So I'm going to uncomment everything that needs to be uncommented for what I want to do. So I'm just getting rid of the, the extra menu items I don't need and leaving what I do. So we have our top menu item that I can make sure the menu is going to say vet app. Then we have our menu categories. I'm just going to call this records. And then under our records category, we'll have our animals like that. And when th that's really all you have to change because this parent is going to line up to this just fine uh, here and this one is going to tie to this one just fine so everything ties together the only thing we probably want to change here is, is I just don't want it to say vet app action window I'm going to tap animals onto the end of that tag that on the end then I'm going to come up here and uncomment this action and so once we pull that menu it's going to trigger this action here that means we want animals here and finally we have animals here for our list of animals and our model here will be animal and with this if we file save and restart if I didn't make any mistakes I'm looking for any errors here first because that's probably the first thing I'll see now I'm, I am seeing that it doesn't see this ah one of the things we have to do, we got to go to our manifest and uncomment that security file that we added our security to right here. I always forget that little trick. You got to do that. They have that one uh, commented out in, in, in this version of Odoo and most version of Odoo that I've ever seen. This is commented out, so that's why we still got that warning. So I have to do one more restart. So you just have to make sure that, that, that you change that in the manifest or else it won't pick it up. So now it picked it up. I can jump over and refresh this and we should get a menu here vet app and when we choose vet app it's going to take us right to our animals model and you can see we have records here and it shows our animals let's go ahead and create one and I will use my dog Rian he is a uh, wiener dog and uh, his birth date is unknown it uh, he was found but he's old so I don't know uh, not going to worry about the dates, but he's not that old. But <laughs> maybe something like that. Well, not even that old, but he's old. Ah, oh, come on. Don't make it hard on us. All right, so and then we would have notes area. So this is basically what you would expect. Uh, a really simple starting an Odoo app from scratch, making a model. Now we want to report. So, you know, here's where we would actually build a, a report for this simple model. Now, in Odoo 14, they've kind of changed the syntax a little bit. So one of the reasons I think this, re this, this video has value is, is it's a little bit different. So um, one of the things we could do is come up here and search. And I want to search uh, for something that will help me find an example. Because I don't want to have to type the whole thing out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put in iractions.report. Because I know that this is the action that triggers the report. And I get a lot of options. Uh, right here I can use um, and I'm noticing here this coupon report uh, XML I can click on this and this gives us basically a template for what we're going to need for our report so I'm going to copy this and um, go back over to views and paste it in here now ideally we'd make another XML file and just link to that from within our manifest but this is about making a report you can put these uh, record tags in any file 
so, but for organizational purposes, you'd probably want to have a, a reports file for this. Um, we're going to rename this, obviously, instead of report coupon code, we're going to say report vet app animal, like that. And then this will stay the same, and we want to say animals here. And for our model, as you might guess, we want vet app dot animal. And it's even showing us here that our IntelliSense and our IDE is picked up, that that's a valid model for us to use. This will stay the same. This we will stick with the same uh, syntax. So we'll say vet app because that's the app. And then now we want to specify what the report file is. So we'll just use the same kind of syntax here. We'll just say report animals. And I'm saying animals because it's plural. There's multiple ones, I guess, in the report possibly. You might want to just have the say animal. Maybe we'll just say animal. And uh, the binding model ID. Now this is what's important so that it can tie it uh, to our, our form and actually put a print option within our form automatically. Like it's just gonna do that. We won't have to create a separate button. The framework's just gonna pick it up. It's kind of cool. But we need to follow this same syntax uh, where we're gonna say vet app underscore animal. Now, just a little tip. This is why you probably never want to name your apps with an underscore. It, it just makes it a little confusing with some of the, the syntax they have here and the, how you um, substitute out the periods for underscores when you're delineating your models and, and, and things like that. And so um, in, in other examples, I've used underscores before in the past uh, in my app names, and, and it just makes things confusing. This will stay the same. Okay, so now we can save this, and um, I should be able to just actually come up over here and run it, and I have my ID set to automatically save. Now, because I've set my JSON uh, launch up here to automatically update, I should be able to see down here loading uh, the vet app module, and then it's, it's basically doing a creating or updating on the table. So you'll see that it's specifically updating that app. So whoop, if I come here now and I refresh, I should get a print button here. And that print button then says animals here. And I could, I probably should say animal report or something like that. So I choose that and I get an error expectedly because I don't have the report actually set up. This was just setting up the action for the report. And uh, so we have a, have a little more work to do. So with that, let's jump back over to our views and let's go ahead and grab a template now and we can just go ahead back to our, uh, our find here where we searched and we found this uh, IR actions report and we can see here's the report name it's looking up so we can get the actual template that it's using by just copying and pasting into here and hit enter. And we're going to jump right here to this template. Now, this one I really like. I just kind of stumbled on it. But it makes it really simple because we don't have to cut out a lot. It's a, really a wrapper around a sub-report. So what's happening is this, is this is the container for the, for the whole report. And it's looping with this for each loop through every record that we've selected. And so it works with any model. You don't have to worry about what the model is. This syntax here is, is generic right here, the four docs. P as, as O, and it's just going to loop through all of our records that we have selected in our list view are a single record if we're in the form. So that's kind of nice. And then what this particular thing does is it sets a context for the language, which we're not going to worry about since we don't have um, the partner, a partner record hooked in to our model yet. It's something we could add to it. Um, but what this one does is it calls this sub report, which I assume is up here right here and then so this is actually all the detail in the report um, but we're, we're going to basically copy this and paste it in to our views here so we have has some things to show and what we want is instead of report underscore coupon blah blah i e n that's basically a a, a localization type of of thing there uh, we want to take this the report animal and put it in here. 
And so it's going to pick this up when we click it and come here to show whatever's here. It's going to have this HTML container wrapper around everything. We're going to loop through all the records. We're going to eliminate this for now because we don't have really a way to get the language context from our animal model directly. You know, we could, um, not that hard. But um, here, instead of doing this uh, T call out and, um, and this, we're not going to do that. Instead, what we'll do is we'll grab something else from this report that we can use to print out some information. And so I'm just looking through this for something like really simple. Notice how it says congratulations and then it prints out uh, the name of the person here. I can tell that it does this uh, uh, right here. Um, this one actually might be a little bit nicer. I've got an H4 tag I can bring in. Um, so I'm just going to bring this here and paste it in. So we don't have to think about our syntax. And I'm going to just say animal or name. How about this name? Colon. And I can just get rid of everything after this O dot. Notice how they're using this O dot syntax to dig in to the program ID for the coupon. And then they're getting the company from the coupon. And then they're showing the name of the company. So it shows the real power of Odoo here digging into the ORM. No SQL required. No really complex lookup. It's letting you transverse the model uh, in a very powerful way. And, um, but we're going to keep it simple here and just say name. And we're going to save this. And I didn't need to hit save there. I really just needed to come in here and run this. And everything's going to stop. I usually watch here for errors because um, to jump over and then have them is, is sad. All right, so I'm going to run this. And now when I hit print and hit animals, things go for a little bit. We have a PDF. And when I pull it, there we see the name and Rin from our record that we have. And it's really that simple. That's like the core basics for how you create a custom report on top of a custom model, on top of a custom app, you know, under 15 minutes. Um, it's pretty quick. Uh, obviously, if you're just doing the report part and you jump there, it, it's really fast. Um, if we create another uh, uh, record here, uh, BB, uh, it's an African gray parrot from the Congo. And her birthday is in is a lot of years ago, uh, 2006, February the 25th. And so, sweet bird. And if I save and I go back to animals, I pick both of these records and print. We'll see that it's going to loop through our, our data um, and, and show them just as you would expect, just a very, very simple syntax. Now, how do you make a complex report? Well, what I do is I would go here uh, to the, the source that we were looking at, like for this coupon, and look through here how they are structuring and showing information and the, the, the tags they're using and how they're looking. So find a report no do that looks somewhat like what you want to accomplish. You know, it uses some of the same structure. Find it in the source code and extrapolate out and pull out uh, the classes and the styles and the things that are going to, in the padding, you can see here, formatting for dates, things like that. Uh, you know, I could make more videos. I'd be glad to just comment below. Tell me what you're interested in. But the truth of the matter is the Odoo source code is going to give you the template for what you need to build your own custom Odoo apps. Uh, I can help you get there much, much faster. You know, I've got courses uh, on Odoo development. If you're really serious about developing Odoo applications, I've been doing it a lot of years. I've taught lots of people how to do it. I'd obviously uh, like the opportunity for you to try out my courses. But uh, the best tip I can possibly give you, absent of any anything else, is when in doubt, look to the Odoo source code. Your answers are there. You'll solve your problems there. And if you're trying to do something that you can't find where it's being done in Odoo anywhere else, then probably try to rethink your problem and think, you know, where can I find something, an interface in Odoo or a report in Odoo that at least gets me closer to where I need my customization to be and then use that uh, to help you get to where you want to go. So I hope you guys like this video. Please like, please subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.